A question we often get on this YouTube channel and in community is why Langflow and why not NAN? Um, this, we, we keep getting this question and so we figured we'd take a moment and, and talk about it and, and maybe answer it. Um, off the bat, we want to start by saying um, we are more interested to complete the ecosystem than to compete with, with anyone. And really, um, as developers, we're pretty spoiled for choice to have so many great options and great tools to choose from. In this video, we're going to talk about Langflow and N8N, but we're going to talk about it respectfully and we're going to talk about it in the context of finding the right tool for the job. Um, indeed, Langflow and N8N both solve similar problems, but they were purpose built from the ground up to solve different problems. Um, Langflow was built from day one to work in the AI ecosystem and solve AI related problems. Problems like multi-agent systems, um, long-term memory, shared context, context engineering, and RAG pipelines. Um, Langflow has always existed for that purpose and was built with that purpose in mind. And it and predates Langflow. It came out a long time before Langflow and was created to solve problems around work flow automation, literally, like automating workflows. And the interesting nuance here is that not all automation requires AI, you know? And I think that's where we start to see these tools be similar, but also different. Um, and, and that's an important distinction to highlight. Again, Langflow was purpose built from the ground up from day one to serve AI, RAG, agentic, et cetera, use cases, whereas, whereas N8N was, was built for workflow automation, okay? There's a couple more differences and nuances here. Um, not that one is better than the other, um, but I think it's just worthy of discussion. Number one, in Langflow, everything is Python and it was created in the Python ecosystem and literally everything is Python. Like in a Langflow workflow, you've got a big graph of edges and nodes or, or components with lines between them. And every component or every node is just Python. It's literally just Python. In fact, I'm working on something to help us better um, serve you, our YouTube community, by monitoring comments, and I'm building this in Langflow. And let me show you how we get YouTube comments in Langflow. Like, it's literally just, this is my flow, YouTube comment retriever. I wrote this as Python. I wrote all of this myself from scratch, and, and it's just Python, you know? We, we import requests from Python just to talk to the Google API and YouTube, and it's just, everything is just Python. In fact, um, if OpenAI ships a new language model, say GPT-5, and Langflow hasn't yet caught up with its built-in OpenAI component, since everything's just Python, you can just add GPT-5 yourself. In fact, uh, we have a blog post about that. Let me, let me show you. So if we go to the blog, um, GPT-5, and search for it, we'll have this post by Phil, how to run OpenAI's GPT OSS and GPT-5. And in the blog post, Phil is literally just like edit the OpenAI component and just add this and you'll get GPT-5. And, and it's literally like that. So if we go here and search for OpenAI, um, let's just drag OpenAI in here, edit the code and we just like add this line, right? Um, just like that, we've got GPT-5, you see? Um, and I can say hi, if I send it, um, I should, I get a response like from GPT-5, you know? And so it's it's just Python. And, and with that, that's a deliberate choice. Reason number one being most machine learning and AI workloads are in Python. It's like the language of the space that Langflow was created to operate in. So it made sense to create Langflow in Python and as Python. Um, secondly, a lot of the machine learning popular libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Hugging Face Transformers, all the libraries and the ecosystem is in Python and you can just import them and use them in Langflow. So Langflow is like code first, Python, and it gives you visual layers on top of that, including networking like API layers and MCP servers and so on. But that's a clear difference between Langflow and N8N. N8N is not Python, first of all. It can be somewhat customized, um, but that language is JavaScript, and it, that's, it was made for like the web ecosystem and workflow automation and connecting things. I think that's a very important nuance to talk about, okay? And, and it's, it just it also like reinforces the purposes for which these tools were built. And it and undoubtedly can play in the AI space, but it's, it's not made for that natively. Um, where N8N does shine is its enormous library of integrations and connectors. There was like over 300 last time I checked, and it's, it's a super rich ecosystem to connect various web services with other web services and your application logic to automate a lot of things. And when you start to understand these nuances, you start to understand, hey, these are both fantastic tools 
when used for the purposes they were created for, right? In fact, we get a lot of Langflow or NAN or Langflow versus NAN. And what if you had Langflow and NAN? You can actually use them together because again, they were created to solve different problems. And when you use purpose-built tools for their right purposes, you can actually combine them in really intelligent and interesting ways. For example, um, Customer support. People use Zendesk for customer support, right? And and with Zendesk, your customers go on your website, they open a support ticket, um, and then your customer support staff reads those tickets and addresses them, talks to your customers over Zendesk. Um, however, some tickets can be repetitive and maybe not worth human effort because of the volume of tickets, and you may want to automate some of that. You can use N8N to create a workflow such that when somebody opens a Zendesk ticket and it matches certain criteria, it's maybe repetitive, it's not a complex question, whatever it may be. When someone opens a Zendesk ticket, you then connect to Langflow over the web API and use AI and use your company's internal knowledge. You can use RAG, you can use all of the AI, you can have a multi-agent system, you can whatever you want. Um, and then Langflow gives you a highly intelligent response that N8N sends to Zendesk to close the loop and serve the customer. You can actually combine them in this way. In fact, let's explore what that might look like right now. So I've got Zendesk set up here. It's in German because I live in Germany, but this is Zendesk. Your unsolved tickets, I don't have any. Um, and we've got N8N. This is just a basic N8N flow with actually nothing. And we've got Langflow, which is a chat input an intelligent agent and a chat output. And this agent, you know, it can it can go through my company's vector database, it can do memory, um, it, can, it can do all kinds of things, but we'll keep it simple for now. So we've got, again, Zendesk, N8N, Langflow, and we want to use them in harmony. Let's start with N8N. I'm going to add a first step, and this is where we see that rich ecosystem. So we've got Zendesk and a trigger. So when a new Zendesk event happens, so I'm connected here with my Zendesk account, and I'm gonna add a condition that matches any of these rules. So if there's a ticket with the status open, if there's a new one, then trigger this workflow. So I will execute this, and Zendesk is gonna start listening for this test event. So let's go make it. So I'm gonna make a new ticket in Zendesk. I'm gonna call it test, test, and I'm gonna make it as an open ticket, okay? So I did that, we go back to N8N, cool. Node executed successfully, it's connected, that's great. So now we can start to build out this workflow. So let's, when we have a new ticket, let's get the new ticket, uh, get a ticket. And this is our ticket, so we'll just drag it in here. Awesome, it's working. Cool, so now that we get the ticket's details, we can construct a message from this ticket to Langflow to have Langflow generate like a smart response using all of our internal company knowledge and RAG and all these things, okay? So um, to do that, let's um, add another node and we'll say, you know, I want to do an HTTP request and this request will go to Langflow. Um, Langflow, like N8N, is open source. You can host it wherever you want. We have a ton of content about how to host Langflow. There's a link up there if you're watching on YouTube or somewhere underneath. Um, but once you've hosted Langflow, any flow becomes an HTTP web endpoint. So we just get that now. So this is our customer support flow for Zendesk. And again, we can include whatever memory we want and so on. We can make a multi-agent system. I'm going to share this and share it as an API. This is my API URL, so I'm gonna copy this, put it in N8N right here. Um, I'll send a body, and I wanna say the input type is chat, and the uh, input value is the content from Zendesk, which I believe we get a subject and a description. In fact, the cool thing about N8N is you can just use JavaScript right here. So we'll do json.subject, and we should have autocomplete, and then we'll do json.description, and it should um, evaluate to something. Um, execute this node to view data. Okay, so let's execute this node. Can I, can I drag? Is there a description in here? Yeah, okay, description's right here, actually. I can just, um, also just to be safe, just drag this right there. Look at that, that's fantastic. And we'll do subject, which I believe is also here. Subject, no? Okay, whatever. Uh, we'll just do JSON dot subject. Great, so now we've got this, we're sending it to Langflow. Um, let's execute this step and see. So we've got, this is so great. We've got, we're sending everything. It says test, test. 
we are getting back an HTTP error, and that's scary, but that's because we're doing a get and Langflow expects a post. Let's execute this one more time. And now we are sending this to Langflow. It seems like you've provided a string with the content test, test. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, great, so we're getting back something from Langflow. We now need to update the Zendesk ticket with Langflow's response. So we'll go to Zendesk and we'll choose to update a ticket. Uh, and the ticket ID, I believe we have here, right? Perfect. And we update the public reply to come from Langflow. It's um, this one. And we'll update the ticket's status to be solved. Okay, cool. So now we're, we're done. Let's execute that step as well. Just to see, it looks like it worked. Let's go back to the canvas. Go back to Zendesk and the all unsolved tickets, zero. The latest solved tickets is one, our test. So it's working. That's absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm just gonna go to Langflow and reset everything. And so we've actually got a solved ticket where the response came from Langflow. That's cool. Uh, let's put it all together now. So what we've done is we've had a Zendesk system and with NAN we've created a workflow that when we have a new ticket that matches certain criteria, we delegate to Langflow, get a highly purpose-built AI response using our company's internal knowledge, whatever it may be, using a multi-agent system. In fact, we taught you on this channel on YouTube and in the Langflow blog how to build a multi-agent system for deep research. There's a link again up there or um, somewhere underneath this, perhaps under the subscribe button, hint, hint. Anyway, so um, let's put it all together and look at this now fully end-to-end -end in action. So we are, um, well, this is N8N. We'll open this in, let's say, split screen with Zendesk. I'm really excited about this. And what we're going to do is we'll execute the workflow. So it says waiting for a ticket to appear in Zendesk. I'm gonna make a ticket in Zendesk. So let's go here. Let's add a new user. We'll say um, David Gilar Jones Gilardi, my teammate. Okay. And he's asking um, why rainbows? Our workflow didn't execute. Let's just execute this. It's waiting for an event. Why rainbows? And we'll say, why do rainbows even exist in 2025 with nano banana? I don't even know. Okay, so we're going to make this now as an open ticket. And Zendesk should, oh, sorry, and it did pick it up. It went to work. Check it out. It's processing this with Langflow and it updated the ticket. Oh my goodness. And so now let's. Um, Let's check it, let's separate the tabs. And your unsolved tickets is one, but this is actually zero, and the latest solved tickets, Why Rainbows is marked as solved or gelöst in German, and check it out. Rainbows are a natural <laughs> meteorological phenomenon that occur when light is reflected. Oh my goodness, look at that. Um, we have a completely solved ticket using NAN for workflow automation, the purpose for which it was built, and Langflow for AI generation and specialized AI workflows, the purpose for which it was built. And we're using these tools in harmony, such as N8N and Langflow, not N8N or Langflow. As developers, a lot of what we get paid to do and a lot of our time spent working is spent choosing the right tools for the job. And there is honestly few feelings greater than as an engineer knowing that you're working with the best tools for the job. With that, um, I hope this video has shown you what those tools are, right? Um, Langflow was built for its specific use case of building highly intelligent and non-trivial AI workflows and systems. Um, and, and it was also built for building very powerful integration workflow automation system. When you use the right tool for the job, you ultimately end up with truly great software, which is our mission to help you create here at Langflow. We hope this is helpful. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment below or at us on social media. For now, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.